Hey everybody, welcome to Creative Conversations of David and Donna. I'm David. And I'm Donna. And we just decided on a candle scent. Mm -hmm. So I was naming the different scents I had. I got a lot of candles for Christmas. And David chose lavender. And he was about to explain to me why. And I said, well, babe, just let's tell the world. So what is your mm -hmm. reason? Well, you said lavender. And I'm, it's not even if it necessarily smells better than the other choices you had. But it's because lavender... And what came to mind instantly is, is that whenever I'm having a conversation with somebody and for whatever reason I have to name a generic smell, I always say lavender. Okay. Yeah. Is there some reason for that? I don't know. <laughs> I just know it's true. And does, but does, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like if I'm like, hey, so I smell if, or like you or if I'm like talking about like, oh, the place smelled like a uh, lavender. <laughs> No. Even if it doesn't smell like lavender, I'll just say that. Well, I will say that lavender is a soothing scent. It helps you to be very peaceful and calm. Mm -hmm. And that is not my mood today at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's okay. I love the scent. Have but I told you that I make a lavender coffee? I don't think you have. Tell me about that. Uh, at my coffee shop. Well, the one that... I, not mine. I don't own it. <laughs> the one you I, work at. It feels like I do sometimes, but it's it's the one I work at. Uh, bitter and Sweet Coffee and Froyo, the finest coffee and Froyo in town. Yes, we sell coffee and frozen yogurt. Yes. At the same time, we have a flavor of coffee, uh, lavender. We just have a lavender flavor. Okay. And it's on our menu, <laughs> our specialty <laughs> menu, and, and people get it. It's actually very popular because people go... Lavender, I've never. That what did that <coughs> even taste like? I've got to try it, okay. and, it and it tastes. I I don't know how to describe how it tastes except it tastes how it smells. It's very smooth and 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 flowery. And I wonder if other coffee shops have discovered this flavor. Uh, people come in and they get very surprised, as if they've never seen it anywhere else before. Oh. That we have a lavender. We usually combine it with... I like to combine it with vanilla. I was going to say. I think that, that makes sounds, it very good. Yes. Lavender vanilla latte. Uh, well, the maybe iced. next time you show up, you should have one in your hand for I me. I tell you what, I will make you a lavender vanilla ice latte. And it'll probably melt. The ice will melt by the time I get it here. It has to be cold? Not necessarily, but then it'll become like warm from if it's hot it doesn't have to be cold i mean i can warm something up in the microwave that's a good point but if the ice melts i can't fix that you know what i can do i could just not put ice in it oh. and then we get here and you have ice i do have in ice. your fridge i most certainly do in you fact, do. i just gave some to you in a you glass did of water. in a glass of water yes, that did. is true we need some that's lavender by the way while i was coughing my head off excuse me i drank water and it just made me cough but that's just silly. Mm -hmm. That's in the silly mood I'm in, basically. <laughs> it is a silly mood. It's silly a, mood. it's a, you know, on the way over here, I was like, okay, so we're gonna do this, this, and this today, and that made me feel good having a, um, an actual straightforward uh, goal mm -hmm. in mind, and also uh, I felt good because I had to go to work this morning a bit unexpectedly, and I was kind of stressed about that, but it went, I got through it very fine, and here I am, yep. able to still to come here, right. and I got all the work done before in the time that i needed it to and everything went very well and it's just a fun day uh i've been i'm wearing star wars socks i see that the first yeah. i thought because it's darth vader's helmet and upside down it no it's not darth it's, vader it's, it's, a, a, storm it's a stormtrooper helmet, helmet. Yeah. and upside down it looked like cats see how it looks like oh it does look, look like, looks a, like cat. a cat that is funny that's crazy it's like his ears and the yeah, cat eyes that's, that's funny but no no mouth or no, nose but when a, i glanced i thought it was yeah. cats so this is what andre got me for christmas I like. he got me a bunch of Star Wars, like, a bu like eight pairs of Star Wars socks. Nice, so you will not need for socks. No, I will, I will, every day, I will be wearing, an, every day of the week, I have a new pair. There you go. Of Star Wars socks to wear. Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I've also been playing a brand new Star Wars video game. Mm -hmm. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is what it's, it's very, lot, lots of semicolons in that name. Star Wars semicolon, Jedi semicolon. Fallen or yeah. fa fallen or fine? fallen fa fallen 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 fall order. like you're falling yes but it's fallen. you've already you're already you there fallen. you have Past fallen tense. or because it takes place right after uh episode three revenge of the sith about five years after that so before new hope mm -hmm. and um it's very interesting to me how they do this because in a new hope it is said basically uh obi-wan and yoda are left Oh. That's it. But now in the lore, as you may be aware, they have basically retconned that, no, there are like hundreds and hundreds of Jedis left because we want to tell more stories about it. Right. So now there's, you know, you, you, you learn about, okay, well, there's, Je there's this Jedi left in Star Wars Rebels. We're talking about Star Wars again. We talked about that last week, huh? 
there's this Jedi left in Star Wars Rebels, and he didn't die, and this one didn't die either, and this one didn't die either, and now there's another one. It's like, this one didn't die either. I'm like, uh. But they all have to die eventually, or New Hope doesn't make any freaking sense. That's okay. You know, That's you're okay. right. Don't That's overthink okay. it. Right. It's a fun story. And I like it's the fun game. Fun to what make the movies and have all the merchandise. And David, by the way, sent me this fun link because we've talked about it a lot about Baby Yoda, and how it's just amazing that they didn't have all of the merchandise out for Christmas. And so the information you sent me said that Disney is projected oh, yeah. to have lost how much money? I think it was like two point three million dollars. Mm-hmm. I can believe that. Absolutely. I Just mean, they, they will make it. Ready. They will make it because people oh, yeah. love Baby Yoda, and they will certainly buy the merchandise. But that would have been a hot Christmas. That would have been. Yeah, I guess that data comes from people searching it and not finding it, or the money that was made by third-party companies who just made a Baby Yoda thing mm-hmm. and sold it. Because there are some. I was looking up yeah. stuff about Baby Yoda thinking I might try to buy something about Baby Yoda. Because it's very popular. You're right. Uh, speaking of that, The Mandalorian just ended. Lots of Star Wars. The Mandalorian final episode came out a couple of days ago. Final as in final, uh, final of this season. of this season. Yeah, okay. Season 2 has already been announced for fall 2020. Mm-hmm. So bef- within a year, we'll get more Mandalorian. Uh-huh. Which, I mean, they've, I'm sure they've already been working on it. Uh <sighs> Very good episode, very fun season, uh, just a solid season all around. I definitely check it out. I'll be writing a full review of the whole season, and that'll be up on our website very soon. But you did say something. I think I don't know if you sent it to me or where I read it, but something about all right already. What's the deal with Baby Yoda? Like, oh yeah, let yeah. us know what's going on. So, do you know yet? Does the final episode reveal it? Spoilers, no. Okay. Um, so you're still no, waiting to figure out what's the deal with the baby People Yoda. still keep talking like, you have no idea what this is. Because the Mandalorian is protecting it. And the bad guy's like, you need to give them to me because you don't know what you're dealing with. And it's like, what are we dealing with? Please tell me. And I'd like to know. No answers. We've gone through a whole... No answers. We know... We... We did find out more about the Mandalorian himself. So... When you look at the start of the season till now, what is what do we know? We know more about the Mandalorians and their lore, okay. which is cool. Because well, we knew a lot about it before Disney bought Star Wars. All that, all that epic, tons of expanded universe stuff. But then Disney buys Star Wars and now says none of that's canon. Mm. So we don't really know what to believe anymore. All those books, they're called legends now. Like We don't know if that, any of that actually happened. We no. don't know anything about the Mandalorian. Everything we knew about the Mandalorians thrown out the window. So who is deciding what the actual Mandalorian canon story will be? Uh, I'm guessing, um, I mean, Bob Iger is the head of Disney. So he sort of now has his control. And he's actually very active in it, from my understanding. Um, and then I forget the name of the woman who was in charge of Star Wars. And in fact, I don't know if she still is even. Um, just the heads of that. So I'd say, like, I'm sure Bob Iger has put people in charge to be like, okay. Basically, what the thing is now, anything that gets made... Here's the rule. Anything that is made after Disney bought it is canon. So, so, are they including any at all of the details that were part of the legends now? Um, from my understanding, it's it's pretty much the same. Uh, okay. Mandalorians were a race that were really good at killing Jedi, so the Jedi kind of wiped them out, and um, that's sort of like why they're so few and far between now. Um, I don't know. This is another spoiler for the last episode that they revealed. Is uh, the Mandalorians? Um, it's not a race of people. It's actually a creed. Which, so any any race could be a Mandalorian. A Mandalorian, okay. yeah. Which I don't know uh, too much about the expanded universe. From, from my understanding, no, the Mandalorians were definitely a race of people okay. from Mandalore okay. called Mandalorians. So I, I guess what it is is this. There are a race of people from Mandalore called the Mandalorians. And also, it's a creed and you can join the creed being whatever race it is you are. Well, could it be that because so many of the actual Mandalorians from Mandalore mm-hmm. were wiped out, that to continue, they had to kind of open up the That's a the good point. That's a, that's a very good theory. And I, not, not one I thought of. Um, that would make sense. Maybe they'll explain like that. Mm-hmm. They do explain that the character Mandalorian, they finally give us his name. His name is Din. Uh, Din Jin, actually is his name, Din Jin. Din Jin. Yeah, uh, and we finally see his face also, which is very cool. Um, uh, they reveal that he is not from Mandalore, that he is from an unknown planet, just a crappy planet that was attacked by the Empire, 
and his family was killed by the Empire, but then he was found by a bunch of Mandalorians, which is still doesn't make much sense because it's like, why are all these Mandalorians here? What? Like, they show the scene of he's a child and then all these people in Mandalorian armor show up and start killing the Empire and it's like, what? And they pick him up and they take him and they train him as one of their own to become a Mandalorian. But it's like, why are all these Mandalorians here? There's, there's lots of questions. So in my head, what I'm thinking about is you can see his face and he, you've already told me <clears throat> he's humanoid. So he looks human? Yep, he is a human. Like, he looks human. Um, I mean, is he human or do we not know? Yes, he is human. Like human, like from Earth human or just a human type? No, alien? like from Earth human. Like, so, he looks like you and me. Okay, so the people who are the man, were from Mandalore, have you ever seen one of those? Yes, masks? we and have. How are they different? They also look like that. They so also they look, look human, like from from Earth human. Yes. So there is no distinction, like. There's no distinction, as in like, the oh, they have big ears or, or whatever. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That's interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of alien races are shown to look human, like we're human. But yeah. I would think that they would want to make a distinction between him, and the people right. who rescue and the him. other man. No, but, no, they they're all humanoids. But I guess the implication is that you could be one of the aliens that looks nothing like a human. And, and also a become a Mandalorian because right. okay. it's a creed of people, it's not a race. So, in other words, Baby Yoda could grow up to be a Mandalorian. Well, yes, actually, you're you're dead on because what they explain is that the reason that the Mandalorian saved Baby Yoda was because Baby Yoda's a child, and part of the Mandalorian code, and this is why he was saved, is when you find this child and you pick them up, like you take them. They are called a foundling. Like, you found them. So, and he was a foundling. And he was a foundling. Mm -hmm. And part of the um, the creed and the code is that you either have to return that, that foundling to their to their people, or you raise them to become a Mandalorian. And so, he that's why he was so conflicted about turning yeah. them over as a... Okay. Yes, because he was like, okay. oh, crap, this is a foundling. I was a foundling. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just give this child over. I guess I'll raise him as my own, because that's part of the code. And that's also why the Mandalorians aren't mad at him for, like, not... Because there's a group of Mandalorians, mm -hmm. and he's a part of it, and they're all kind of bounty hunters. And you think, oh, crap, they're going to be mad at him because he um, kind of screwed them over by betraying the Empire. And if you betray the Empire, all the Mandalorians get screwed, which they do. In fact, the, the Empire comes in, finds them, kills all the remaining Mandalorians, of his clan at least. The, the group that was on that planet that he was on. Um, are are killed, and that happened in this series. In this series, okay, okay. yeah. And after Baby Yoda, because what happens is when he decides not to turn over Baby Yoda, the Mandalorians they help him ex escape. Yeah, you had told me that. Yeah, and so he's dead, but there's one left, and she is like, he's like, oh man, I'm so sorry. And she's like, no, it's fine. Like you were following your code. We have to protect this foundling. It's all good. We did the right thing. This is the way. Is what they say because you have to protect the foundling. Um, this okay. is part of their code. So now the implication is he's gone off and, and, uh, he's going to try to find more of his people to hand them over or he'll just raise them as his own. But the problem is baby Yoda's 50 years old and he's still a child. By the time he would be at an age where he even could be trained, the Mandalorian Din will be dead. So... He has to arrange for some way has, for yes. him to continue. He has to, he has to arrange for them to train, or he has to find more of his species to give him to, to them. But as far as we know, there aren't any left, so it's like this big quest now is going on. So next season, hopefully we'll find out a lot more about the species that is Baby Yoda. Because well, we still don't have a name for them. Yeah, Baby species. Yoda came from somewhere. Right, exactly. Yeah. He came from somewhere, just like Yoda came from somewhere. Uh, okay. Yeah, and right. like I said, like Baby Yoda, it's not his name. We just don't know what else to call him because we don't know what kind. We don't know what species it is. We just know that there was one of his species was called Yoda, so we don't know what else to call him except Baby Yoda. Gotcha. Or maybe it's a she. We don't yeah, even. Yeah, we know don't yet. know that. Right, right. I think it actually the official thing is that he's called the child. Okay. Because they refer to him as the child. Wow. So we're right. fifteen minutes in, and I've just been rambling about Star Wars. Yeah. 
So I will just completely jump track I would, now. Yes, I would like and, you to and do say. That. So one of the reasons I'm so excited today is because LSU is in the playoffs for the national championship. So they have mm-hmm. to win the game today. Let me rephrase. They will win the game today. Mm-hmm. And then they will face the winner of the other game. And then they will be national champions. So I'm thrilled beyond words just to watch this game. And this is new for me because uh, my background is that, of course, I'm from Louisiana all my life. And I went to LSU. And I've I've gone through spurts of being an LSU football fan. I don't hate LSU football. I just got to where I really wasn't watching it. There wasn't a whole lot to see. And it's just been so exciting to me to watch this team take off the way it did because um, I'm sure everybody listening to this has heard of Joe Burrow, the Heisman Trophy winner (laughs) from LSU. (laughs) And we're all so proud of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was the LSU quarterback last year, and the team did passably well. And I, I watched off and on when my husband was in the other room screaming, but I just really couldn't care less. So this year, I didn't really watch every game every season, but when they got closer to the end and they started throwing around Joe's name to win the Heisman, and then he did, and not only did he win, but by the biggest margin ever in history, it just absolutely touched my heart. And I did write about that on our blog as well. So um, that's just, you know, my passion at the moment is just thinking about you know, not just the LSU team, but this this one person whose hard work and passion and drive and, and just sheer ability has brought this team to where it is. And he absolutely credits everybody else around him. So he's really good at what he does. And he acknowledges that his confidence is seen as cockiness by quite a few people. But you have to be confident in this world and, and see the vision of what you want to achieve if you ever want to achieve it. And he's, in my opinion, just a prime example of that. But, um, so we're going to watch that game right now. It's going to happen in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we finish this podcast, it's going to be stop, go turn on the TV, Uh watch LSU Tigers win. I'm so, so excited for the game. I am very excited for you to be excited. (laughs) David does not care about LSU football, but that's okay. I don't care. No, no, no. I don't care about football in general. And it's not, I don't have anything against it. I played football for a while. I just, I... Like I said, we talked. We joked about last time. Whenever you sent me your dear Joe Burrow, I was like, "Who the freak is, <laughs> Who is Joe? Joe Burrow?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Okay, if you want." Then of course I read it and realized, "Oh, he won the Heisman." Okay, <laughs> and he's from LSU. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, my reaction was, "Wow, I bet if I liked football, this would be really cool." Well, my son. Uh, I don't mean to insult it at all. I just it's just no. I hear you. In. My son was an LSU Tiger band this semester, and uh, mm-hmm. he. I sat him down when he came home for the Christmas break and said, hey, let me show you something I wrote. And I started reading to him what I wrote to Joe Burrow. And he's like, wow, mom, it's so weird to hear you talking about football. I'm like, well, I'm not really talking about football. I'm talking about Joe Burrow. But either way, LSU football has a phenomenal team. This overall, they won um, Coach O, won Coach of the Year. And all the other players who could be recognized have been recognized. And they, as a team, and even Joe, other than the Heisman, has won so many other awards and They've just been recognized. And the people, I have to say this story too. This morning, my husband and I went to Walmart. And we are just, we are in Baton Rouge, but on the outskirts. But I can promise you that every other Walmart in the state of Louisiana was full of people like I saw wearing LSU. And unfortunately, I didn't even think to put on my LSU Mm -hmm. shirt. I should go put it on. But um, it was just the coolest feeling to walk through the store and see all the people in their LSU garb. And you know that at three o'clock, every house in the state is going to have the TV on and cheering for this game. And we are so proud. Just, I mean, Tiger Nation has always been strong, but it's just so cool to have a reason to be this reignited with this passion. And I just love it. I love being from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so much fun. I enjoy Louisiana a lot. I like being from Louisiana too. I just not the reason, but that's very cool and exciting to see. Um, and you're right. Uh, we actually are talking about uh, where I work. We were talking about just closing the store because there's nobody that's going to come in. Like you, Most of the time on LSU football, we don't have anybody that comes in because they're all at home watching the game. But at this point, like there's nobody's getting yogurt. Nope. Um, they make their own coffee at home. <laughs> yeah, and even once the game's over, it's going to be like... Party time. Party time. Yeah. Yes. No right. Um my coffee's better than coffee you make at home, Donna. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. <laughs> yeah, but kidding. I can tell you people not want to pull their right. themselves no. away from their game. To you're go, you're let 100% you make their right. Coffee. It's very exciting. That's a it big is. deal so to people. 
Um, I get excited when people get to have those moments, uh, but it's funny to me that I have those same moments, but it's about things that nobody else has those moments about. You are so funny. David and I just get in sync. It's crazy. I'm sure you've heard it if you've listened to us at all. So my next what? question for David was going to be, so what kind of things make you feel this oh. way? And he said it before I could ask the question. Oh, oh that's So funny. let us hear. What, uh, what makes you so excited? Things that make me feel that way. Um, you know, in the same way you're talking about, I'm so excited to see Joe Burrow recognized and it's just so blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't, oh, blah, 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 sounds so insulting. I didn't mean it like that. No, I know exactly what um, you mean. I just, I get excited when, um, the Oscars and I, and people that I'm a fan of are going to get recognized. I'm I excited. I think it's exactly the same thing. It, pretty much. Like, I'm excited when I go on social media and I see everybody raving about Jon Favreau uh-huh. because of The Mandalorian. Right. And I've been a fan of Jon Favreau long before The Mandalorian was even a thought in his mind. And I always felt like, oh, Jon Favreau. And they're like. Who? But now it's like, oh, John Favreau. Yeah, they're ooh. Um, for some reason, in my head, I said, oh yeah, his name's John too. But then I was like, wait, no, his name's the other one's name is Joe. <laughs> well, so they both start with a J. Both start with the J. A J O. No J O. So. Yeah. But um, so we that's that's there. um that's exciting to me like that. Uh, I get excited for this sort of thing. Um, uh, whenever I used to watch esports, <laughs> that would be a thing where I get excited for my team, and I would like. Get it on my. I'd have it on my screen, my TV all day, like all the both like the pregame stuff. And my family's like, "What are you doing?" And um, WrestleMania, uh, for 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 wrestling. I'm a big pro wrestling fan, um, and I don't watch it as much now because some of it was just crappy, and I didn't want to watch it. But I get excited when there's a lot of stuff happening in the wrestling world, or when someone wins a championship. And yes, they don't they don't actually succeed in anything to win the championship, but they did have to like be good at it and get popular you're only going to win the championship they're only going to put the title on you if you are a popular wrestler that the crowd loves and mm-hmm. like and, and and is a fan of and you have to like be good at it you know at, at whatever it is and you do, and to win the championship and and so that gets exciting though whenever because it's not always like that sometimes the championship gets put on people where it's like why is he the champion so whenever you have a wrestler that you know is actually very good at his job as a wrestler and puts on very entertaining matches and is very good at his character and then he gets the championship it's like oh i'm so excited for dango brian to be recognized in the same way and in the same way that i'm like who the frick is joe people are like who the frick is dango <laughs> yeah, brian i get you yeah fun fact he actually won the wwe championship in new orleans in the main event one time and yeah. I, I i didn't go uh, uh, because it's expensive, yeah, even though it was yeah, right there, true. and that was heartbreaking. Because I was like, I have a similar story right about something there. else. Yeah, what? Please about tell me. Lion King? Because I Lion love King. Broadway shows, and I used to teach about Lion King on Broadway because I have a book about it, and Julie Taymor and her directing ideas, and then the way they did all the costumes. And when I was teaching about uh, costumes and theater class that I taught. I just raved about The Lion King on Broadway, and I never have seen it. It came to New Orleans after many years of me waiting for it to come, and when it did, it was just inconvenient. I had young children. I just didn't have the extra money thrown around. I mean, Broadway mm-hmm. tickets are so expensive. So one of the things that we can talk about, I'm going to totally switch tracks again, mm-hmm. is goals because we're coming into the new year, and David and I, one of the things we like to talk about uh, on our podcast is our business because we both are kind of floundering at this moment, trying to figure out, you know, where is our direction. And we want so much to fulfill our our business objective, our goal, our all of these things that we've talked to you all about. And we just got to find a way to actually get back on track. So um, this is, let's see now, about six months since we've started our business, right? Yeah. We started in the middle of the summer. So um, we like to kind of reflect back on what we have accomplished and then what we want to accomplish. So um, one of the things that we have accomplished is that we have posted a podcast every Sunday since we started. No matter what, we found a way to get a podcast on air. Yeah. So that is a huge accomplishment. I'm very proud of that. And um, we have many ideas, (laughs) but what we have to do now is set our goals because I want us to kind of say to the world what we want to accomplish by this time next year as we get ready to move into the end of the first year of this new decade, which is still amazing Mm -hmm. to me. My God, it's going to be 2020 in just a few days. Um, What are some things, David, that you really, really want us to accomplish before the end of next year? Um, Looking at it... As not realistically, but uh, but um, 
I mean, because I could say I want a million subscribers on YouTube, but like, let's actually like say like, okay, let me think. What I want is to um, actually start making uh, revenue off of YouTube specifically, mm -hmm. which implies a, a certain amount of subscribers and views monthly to make anything. And what and, is the minimum before you start getting ads? Uh, I believe it's like a thousand subscribers. Okay, so we definitely are going to set the goal of a thousand subscribers, and then beyond that, to continue making content, whether it's the podcast or additional things that we're playing with at this moment, to just get people interested in what we're saying, and then to be able to broaden our base to help people. That's really our main goal: is to help people. So we want the information. Help them stay that we, creative. To stay creative. So we're putting out information in different forms and researching other ways to put out information, one of which is to create courses, which we have started. Oh, yeah. And By the end of the year, we will have a complete, fully operational course on writing plays. So from concept to curtain call, we'll be finished and on available on Thinkific for you by the end be. of the year. End of the year. By the end of the year, definitely. Yes. Um, okay. What else is on your mind? Uh, Let's see. Um, well, one of the things I've mentioned is affiliate marketing, which I have learned about and am trying to get started. I, I've done steps in that direction, and I've even included some, well, one video so far on our YouTube channel about what I've started. But um, I really honestly feel like that is just for us to have money to do the other things that we have in mind to help other people. But, you know, any business needs money to get started. So I would, I would like for us to through our affiliate marketing to create enough money to start actually moving into other areas that we want to with our stay creative business. Mm -hmm. So um, that would include possibly um, meeting with other people that are in the same business that we are to help us get our word out. And I've, I've been a student for a very long time of like self-help and improvement and all these things and just name after name jumps to mind of people that I would love to work with and that takes money. So I would like to do to have enough money to, to do some of these things, to improve our approach to business, and then learn how to be able to offer those things to other people. Because I honestly feel like what David and I are doing is going to lead us to a point to where we're offering conferences and workshops in addition to our courses and speaking live and selling books and things that will help us to help you do whatever you want. And then in addition to that, David's big goal is, go ahead, the production idea. Oh, yeah. So... When I look back on, on what it is we're trying to do and why we did this and, and what it is we can do, in in my mind, I, I sort of boiled it down to like a production. Like we want to help people produce things yes. and create things. And um, the way that I thought to do that is, is like, okay, well, let's say, hey, you have an idea for a play. We will personally help you write it. And um, you have an idea for a book will personally help you write it you need something written for whatever reason and we will help you write it uh so i am going to today uh come fully launch a fiverr mm -hmm. for stay creative where you can go on there and, and on there we'll have the the listing of what it is we'll actually offer uh to do for you but um you pay us money and we uh, through fiverr and we will do what it is you request so Maybe you need um, a, I don't even know, um, maybe you need an outline done for the book you want to write or mm -hmm. a play you want to write or you just need help looking over it and editing it and, yeah. and developing and a character, developing or, a character. Or, yes. All these things that, that we have um, done and, and like to think we're pretty good at <laughs> uh, and talk about very often. We want to help people do it. That's what we do. We help people um be able to accomplish their creative goals exactly yeah and so what that means for us is that we also are working to to reach our creative goals so one of the creative goals that we both have is writing and um you have been working on your book have you mm -hmm. worked lately on um summerborn i try to write once or twice a week do you just sit i do good uh I, i'm i it's a slow grind forward um I've run into trouble, like, how to take all these ideas and, and press them down. I have this big outline and all these big things. But, um, yes, I am I am working. I am writing a book, called, fantasy novel, called Summerborn. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, by the end of the year, um, I would like 
No, I was, by the end of the year, I would like a completed first draft. Okay. I'm a few chapters in. Okay. A few chapters in. And um, I have a vague idea of how many more chapters it would be. But there's I something you and I could work on. David and I write well together. So I could sit with him and hash mm-hmm. out through some of his ideas, which will help us learn how to help other people if they have that the same true. kind of issues. But my issue is that I did write a book. And I really like the book, but I know it needs to be edited. And um, I kind of tried to say that I was going to get that done by the end of this year, but oh, so many other things are in the way, and I don't want to make an excuse. But I would like to proclaim that by the end of this year, I, will, I would like to have submitted my, edit, my edited mm-hmm. book to someone and, you know, try to figure out a way to get it published because I really do like it. And, I mean, the idea of self-publishing it is not completely out of the question, but then if I can do that... I can offer it through Stay Creative to sell. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that we have already written together is a little story. It's kind of a fable type story about finding your talent and not feeling sad to express it, or not feeling scared to express it to the world. Mm-hmm. And it's our timid crepe myrtle story. So we are uh, trying to get that illustrated so that we can offer it also as an ebook and create maybe a a fun course to go along with it to help people learn that everyone is special and that expressing your gifts is something that is not only good for you but good for the world Mm -hmm. so that that is something that we want to offer as well Mm -hmm. so i would think by the end of the year we would certainly be able to get that done i i I, certainly definitely i'd like to write another play together by the end of the year okay but not maybe necessarily for for me not not just for dental strings theater Mm -hmm. right um i would love for them to perform it but not um necessarily for them I would. I don't want to write it with the goal of we have to have it done by this time for Denim Springs Theater. Just like, or we have to fit this certain bill because that's what we're gonna do. Like this, I, I'd like to write another play together and then take that and use that as a jumping off point for um, anything that we want to do of like being a a company uh, that is a, a known um, creative talent. Does that make sense? On well, like, I'll, I'll add say to our this, arsenal. Yes, but what I'll say to you about submitting anything, uh, submitting any plays, mm-hmm. is that it's really a really good idea to perform it first uh-huh. so you can work the bugs out of it. And I mean, I've, I've written and staged enough original content to, to at least anticipate some of the mm-hmm. issues. But like when we wrote Camp Dinky Springs together, one of the things that completely slipped by me is how many times the characters change clothes. <laughs> because we right. wrote a play about a camp that was over the course of a week, and there were some times where we went from one day to the next day in like a two-second curtain. I mean, not even curtain. We don't have a curtain. Two Two-second scene change. Uh-huh. So people were running off stage, changing a shirt, running back on stage, and it's the next day. And we were able to... At, because we, in rehearsal, found the problem, rearranged some things. We, we added the fact that our drill sergeant became not only a lover of music, but a dancing drill sergeant. So he danced to fill time, and it was a crowd pleaser, and it added to the character, and it was just amazing. So there are things like that that really need to be vetted out in the first live performance to make it to make sure that it's accessible to other people who want to perform it. But I would like mm-hmm. to jump in now and say that... Um, Again, if you listen to us, I've been talking about writing the next play we're doing this coming semester, and it's the updated Romeo and Juliet, updated to the 60s. So I do have a final draft, and I did send it to David. Have you had time to look at it? No. I didn't think so. But um, I, The I will, holidays are busy. Oh, I, they are. But um, I personally think it's one of the best things I've ever done, because I, as a person who's taught English for 31 years now, well, 30, because I'm not teaching it this year, but I, I have taught Romeo and Juliet countless like I don't even know how many times I've taught it to a different class of people so I just really really know the play and I know West Side Story and I also grew up in the 60s born in 65 so I have some of that in me even though I had to go back and review quite a bit of it but the idea of having a hippie Romeo fall in love with a socialite Juliet to me it just I don't even honestly remember how that came up when we were trying to think of new ideas for plays at the end of last school year I think it had to have been me that had this idea I don't remember who else would have thrown that out except me but um it has just been a really good experience for me personally with the idea of flow like I just sit in front of the computer and I I ask for my genius to come work with me and if you don't know what that means there's a book by called Big Magic 
by the writer of uh, Eat, Love, Pray, Elizabeth. God, I can't say her last name right now. I have to look that up for you. But um, anyway, I read that book and it changed my whole life. It, it's just all about the creative process and, and feeling like if you sit in the chair and you're intent on getting your work done, you aren't a genius, but you have a genius. And you ask that genius to come sit next to you and, and work through you. It could be the same idea of any way you want to in, define inspiration or a muse or whatever. And I have had some flowing moments where stuff just came out of me. And I read back over it and go, wow. <laughs> Uh, I have been really excited about how this play has turned out. I am very excited to see it on stage performed. I, I think it's going to be so cute. I, I I agree. I'm very excited for that too. <laughs> um, I would say more about it, except I haven't read the newest final. Well, you've draft read a decent amount of it. So, from what you have read, do you have a comment? I very much enjoy reading it. I think it's very well written, <laughs> and I think that it is a. Um, how do I... I think it is going to come across very, very funny and good on stage. Now, I that I is a main concern. Let me just throw in. It's Elizabeth Gilbert. That's what I was trying to say, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure. Her name is Elizabeth Gilbert. Big magic. You should read that book. It's amazing. But uh, I will say this. Um, we had such phenomenal success with our last play, Vlad and Alex, mainly because there were some parts of it that were hysterically funny. Like people in the audience, including myself, laughed until we could not breathe. It was just so funny. And so when we got into rewriting a tragedy and we're trying to figure out how to make Romeo and Juliet, the story itself, tamer because we're not going to have any death and also still funny because the second half of the actual Romeo and Juliet is nothing but whining and whining and crying and sobbing and, and it just, you know, I don't want to put that on my stage. So I had to really figure out what to do to get the story across but keep some humor and I'm very happy with the way I was able to accomplish that. I feel like I really did, mainly through not stereotyping the hippies, but doing a few things that would just be humorous from the hippie standpoint and handling conflict in a way that would be humorous, but still true to the hippie way of thinking, in my opinion. So I'm excited. And I am very excited too. I think it's going to be one of the most interesting plays to see on stage that you've done. Does that make sense? I like, think it's going to be a really big production costume-wise, for sure, <laughs> because I want it to look yeah, like there, authentic. Yeah. stacks of clothes. Stacks. Up, stacks and um, stacks. Up in this room. Yes. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the room that we record this podcast in. Uh, it used to be very, very like empty, but then ever since you started working on this, every, every week that I walk in, there's more and more stuff. <laughs> piled up and it's a very um organized mess <laughs> it is an organized mess uh -huh. you are correct absolutely yeah and every every week there's like oh what's this gonna be for and then you gotta explain it those are some cool hats over there but that's actually for the variety, variety show yeah which is what i'm most excited for every year is just seeing all the different things that um the creative people in your class can come up with and put on stage that's fun i would have killed to have a variety show my year but that was it's the first year that'd be that'd be a lot to figure out so that's well we wrote a play instead david <laughs> remember well, now you're right you've written two plays and doing a variety show so yeah um but, but i'm just saying the first right. year we did one play and it actually was at the beginning of the first semester and when it was over everybody in the classes because i had two were like we've got to do something else and i threw out the idea of the variety show and if you recall you wanted to make an award show type thing right and we, we went through that concept and it was like i don't know how we're going to make that work and i already know how we would have made it work donna go ahead i explained it to you well, let's hear all about it but dude. we didn't have time so instead we sort of made that our award we actually did have an award show I mean, my variety show now if it let's if we would have made this is what i would have done like we explained last week um it was formatted as uh people watching stuff on their phones mm -hmm. and then also uh siblings fighting over the tv mine would have been like okay um the award for the best here are the nominees and then the nominees would be okay i'm saying this out loud and it's falling apart see uh, that's what we're you're right because it. then it's like oh do we do scenes that we've already done then because right. we're actually giving an award yeah or well it could be like they have performances and stuff at oscars and they grammys do. and so it could be like here's in the award for the blah 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 and then they can um whoever wins the award could perform a scene or you could just have the different scenes in between the coming out and, and being like um 
hey, but also it would have been a lot more for us. That would have been, like for the and, class and so personally. we did. Have so which ours is why for we us. that's why we yeah. did it. That's why it worked. But I think it would have been a lot of fun. That was, that was my that was my dream <laughs> thing was the the Van Oscars, um, that I called well, it. It turned into the Van Boss. The Van, which, which yeah. of course you won along with the um, other two people who won it. So. Right, right. The Van Boss Award, but I meant like the show itself yeah. was going to be called the Van Oscars, gotcha. and um, uh, it was I was gonna be like the host like it was gonna be like we're putting on an oscar show uh but you're right that would have been it wouldn't have made sense to the audience what was happening i agree well, and but, and uh but still not a, not a sticking point or anything no <laughs> nothing no. that'll come between us yeah no future. no i'm not resentful or anything <laughs> like that at least <laughs> i'm right. not gonna bring it up all the time like how i wish i could have played a different character than what i actually got to play <laughs> Yeah, somebody still does that. Uh, That's Dean. okay. Yeah, he no, was here. we can say his name because he was here and he we talked. Here, we've yeah. talked about he it was plenty here, of was times. It last night, no, two nights ago, and yeah, I see him all the time. Oh yeah, it didn't come up though. That friends didn't come with up. friends with your daughter and friends with you. Yes, so yes. he comes over often. He does. I love Dean. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, um, so completely random, completely random. Uh, something I wanted to talk about before we started this podcast, I was helping you unload groceries. You know where this is going already, don't you? Oh, please don't, David. And please nope. don't. No. I, I picked up no. this head of cabbage. <laughs> and I said, um, oh, nothing like a good head of lettuce. And you said, that's cabbage. And I was like, right. Now, to be fair, it was in, it was, it was in, a, it was in a bag and it was, it was not down. In a bag. It was not in a bag. It was in a, it was in a. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like one of those plastic bags. No, 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 no. no. Like it was in, it was in like a, a um, shopping bag. A shopping bag. bag. Okay. Um, and it was like, the light was not on directly over it. And I was just looking into the back and grabbing these and handing it. And I didn't get a very good look at the cabbage before I said that, before I said, I love a good head of lettuce. And you said, that's cabbage. Now, if I would have picked it up and been like, this is a good head of cabbage, then, then it would have been, I would have understood that it was cabbage and not lettuce. But anyway, <laughs> I said, what's the difference? And you said, there's a difference. And I said, is lettuce man-made? Oh, goodness. And then I said, you know, I think broccoli's man-made. <laughs> because I don't think anybody wants to hear this. No, no, we're going to talk about this. And then I said, wait a minute, no. Carrots are man-made. Yeah. And you were like, mm. no. And I was like, yeah, I think, like, farmers liked orange carrots. <gasps> and so they bred carrots to be more orange. And I had heard this recently from my daughter. And my husband and I were both like, what? You're ridiculous. There's no possible way that's a thing. So. But I was insistent. I'm like, no, that I read that. And that's that makes per it makes perfect sense to me. And for you, it just doesn't. It didn't make sense. But, it but, makes, then, but then you looked it up. But then I looked it up. And in the wild, carrots grow in purple and yellow and white they do not grow in orange so when a farmer were to pick these wild carrots and then replant them these these genes can mix together and create the orange carrot right. so in a way it is man-made as in in nature they do not grow orange but when a man grows them mm -hmm. and i don't mean i'm not like saying that women can't be farmers okay no, i know but, what you're saying but, a human well, being well some people when a person yeah, when a when a person, person. plants carrots gotcha. and the, the, they can grow orange carrots they can. and so in a way they are man-made well they are man manipulated so manipulated we'll and we'll i was that. not entirely wrong ah it was just a silly comment but i will make this comment related to that somebody asked a question one time on something i was reading about why are there so many different varieties of apples available but there's only one variety of bananas and so the answer was that there are many different varieties of bananas, all different colors mm -hmm. and sizes and shapes and whatever else. And for whatever reason, the, the popular one is what we get. It's what people want. But wouldn't it be cool to walk through a produce section and see not only eight or however many varieties of apples you always get a choice of, but all the different types of varieties of bananas and all the different types and varieties of all the other things where we only have the one choice. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it just kind of begs the question, like, who, who makes these decisions, you know? Uh, I, the, the general public must, because I I, I, it's all based on if they sell, you know, I'm sure. I guess. It's, it's a, it, the majority of people buy all the yellow bananas, and then so you have these, what are the colors? Um, I don't know. Blue, whatever, um, neon green, I don't know, yeah. like blue bananas that just don't get bought. And then they go to waste and they get thrown away. And so the, yeah. the stores are like, well, it's not even worth purchasing these bananas to resell. Nah, so in a way, we make the decision. I guess so. so but but here's, just... well, here's how you fight it. 
you find a market that does have blue bananas and you go buy you know every buy? single blue mm-hmm. banana to like show time. them. <laughs> every time. To every show time. the big boys in suits yep. that you want blue bananas. And, and refuse to buy carrots unless they're purple. Right, 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 right. right. Well, well what's wrong with orange carrots? Well, I mean, I've, I've had different color carrots in restaurants and it's just such a unique thing. So there are people who understand that there is an interest, but they just aren't sold in general grocery stores you gotta go to so. the weird ones you ever been to the world market we had this conversation i think because the world market is a super cool world market the world market it's near here is it the one by the mall yeah the yeah. yeah i've been to the world market oh yeah. it's so cool it i got so cool. much cool stuff i got some pocky from there i told you about pocky love pocky it's like a it's like a pretzel candy from japan and they coat it in like um chocolate or strawberry I feel like I've heard of that yeah. before. Japan yeah. has some weird candies, bro. Japan like, in general is just so unique. Stuff. Just so unique. I told you about, I think we talked yeah. on the show about Japanese soda. <laughs> yeah, just the uh, we don't need to visit. Rehash. Right. We don't need to rehash that. So what time is it now? It's 2.35. Right. Well, I was looking at the time because I was thinking, yeah. okay, so the game. Yeah, but, and I'm looking at 15 more minutes. Right, right, right. So the game starts at in three. 25 minutes. Right. Still so slow. And... Funny. Uh, usually, like at my house right now, I'm sure my family's home, and they've like got bowls of chips and dip, and they're all they have the ESPN on, or just the people going like, "So I think Bubba Blah's gonna win," <laughs> and it's a good, but I think Bubba Blah's gonna yeah, win, the, oh, the and then it's, and then and then and then for like six hours, it's just I'm going, well, "I think that <laughs> I'm doing my hands, like, I'm gonna Bubba Blah," and just doing that for like six hours and cheering, and people love that stuff, eat it up, and it's like this big event. But here we are at your house, and mm-hmm. you're excited to watch the game. But the pregame sitting... doesn't excite me as much. No. But is your husband in the other room, like, watching yeah, that, perhaps? They actually or... just got back, so they're in the kitchen doing I don't know what. But we're probably not going to have lots of food to eat while we eat, while we right. watch. But And you don't have people coming over? No, no. we're just going to we, sit and we watch always, it. it's, it's always a big event, uh, at, from my understanding. My parents always go somewhere else, and then I'm stuck at home sad and alone again because so, I didn't so want to you are there. here and are your parents hosting some kind of big watch party or um i i, I believe they just have some friends coming over i believe uh on new year's eve though we are having like a like friends come over and it's like oh i just want to stay in my room and, and can you yeah but then these friends they want to play games and stuff and i feel bad if i don't go out there and be like hello it's me and they're like hey david but what, how, how blah blah life, blah and yeah. I'm like uh huh I don't want to talk to you that sounds so rude I don't mean it like that well make plans with your friends go over to right. your friend's house right 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 right, 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 right. play D&D until the new year well, comes I would love to play some D&D I played some D&D a couple nights ago I'm trying to play a lot more I'm a big fan Yeah. as we've discussed many times as we about have. D&D as we have So So, I had a thought I wanted to come back to. Please. So we were talking about our goals for our business, and I Uh was thinking about this time next year. But Uh I'm also thinking about big, huge future goals, which we can proclaim to our audience and the universe. Uh So um, when uh, the money starts coming in at a more steady rate, the goal is to have our own brick-and-mortar building, and that would be where the studio would be. So we could actually record a podcast in a studio instead of sitting in my office talking into an iPhone. Which is getting the job done, but it would be nice to have the setup, and mm-hmm. that would be where we could also host other blogs and help with um, whatever production people, you know, might mm-hmm. want to create with us. So that's another really big goal that we have. So for what we're doing in this moment in our lives, I am finishing my thirty-first year. So I'm I'm starting my second semester as my third in the 31st year of teaching so I keep myself extremely busy by choice by writing plays and producing the different acts that we are shows that we're putting up that that really does consume a large amount of my time so in the time that we have off like right now I still have more than a week off before I go back to school I'm, I'm trying to just really fit in all of these other things to help us take steps toward this the huge goals that we have and one of the things that I, or one of the people I should say, I listen to is Jack Canfield, and I've mentioned him before, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul author, but um, he has said in something I've watched, and I've said it to you, that every day, if you have a goal, you need to do five things toward that goal. So if, not if, when we need to like decide, like right now, what is like the goal that we definitely are going to reach by the end of the year, and what are five things we can do toward that on a daily basis. 
So we could even maybe say three, but what, what are some things that we can do to work toward our goals on a daily basis? Oh boy. Okay. Um, wait, so first of all, do we want to pick a very, sp very specific goal? What do you think? What, what, what is something you feel like is feasible for us to actually work toward and like really make it our, like this? By, by, with a whole year's worth of time. Yes. Five things a day, both of us. Maybe even between us, between us. Five things, so two or three okay, a day okay. for each of us. Um, well, Don't finishing the course. Finishing the course. Okay. okay. Good idea. Good idea. What can we do? So on a daily basis. Daily like, well, basis. today you have some thoughts. What were your thoughts about it today? Oh, I'm just going to um, start asking you questions about it because of the format that we've sort of chosen to go with. Uh, we realized that uh, the person with the uh, most information to offer between us is, of course, Donna, who has written, who's far more experienced in writing plays than I am. Uh, so the format that we've sort of chosen to go with for this is almost like an interview mm -hmm. between me and Donna where I ask her questions um, about playwriting and take those answers and sort them into the categories that, 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 they, that they would best fit for teaching how to write a play and, and learning everything that Donna has to offer. So today, I um, I just want to get a big list of questions. Mm -hmm. That's just a big list. So um, every day I could... It depends on how many questions. I'm, every day I could... Um, well, really, you could count every question as one thing if you look at it that way. You, know, you could. Or, or set a set number of questions that you want right. to achieve. Um, yeah. What are some things we could do? We could work on promotion for it. Mm -hmm. uh, work on... I can work specifically on editing videos of the thing and taking the videos. Like we, Whenever we first started doing this, we have over an hour of content of talking about... Uh, various topics. Uh, various topics in playwriting, and I could take that hour of content and edit it into two-minute videos probably and get those uploaded. Mm -hmm. um, creating our formatting our think ific to have it ready for the second that a video is done i can put it up there does that make sense like yes. get all the everything else except for the video needs to be put on there uh those are things i could do i can throw in um mm -hmm. i feel like youtube obviously david mm -hmm. has been doing youtube since you were what 10 11 it's 11 probably. a long time ago so he really understands youtube a whole lot more than i do but just little short uh promotional videos on yeah. youtube but little short promotional videos on Facebook because we oh, have yeah, a Facebook yeah, yeah, group yeah, 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 and yeah, I have yeah, a Facebook and you have Instagram and I don't know how many followers mm -hmm. we have or whatever, but just to try to get the word out. And something I haven't done that one of our online teachers that we have worked with suggests is Facebook groups. So have you ever looked into Facebook groups relating to playwriting or pl staging plays or anything like that? No. Because if we could find those kind of groups and just kind of become active in them, and that's another thing I will just honestly say, Finding the time to to be active in all these different aspects is is really a, a challenge for me, and I I just I know that it's what I need to do. Even like this morning, I got up and I did some work on my online online affiliate marketing because it's like I look at it, and then I have two weeks of just insanity with school, and I get back to it and I forgot everything I learned, so I have to relearn it and then try to set things up again, and then I have two weeks of insanity at school and. It, it's, it is a true struggle for me to, to make myself say, okay, every single day I'm going to spend 30 minutes to an hour in front of this computer doing whatever it is, you know, whether it's throwing stuff up on Facebook, uh, trying to find Facebook um, groups that we can start or join or whatever. These are the things, it's consistency, and, and that's something that you and I both can really work on for the new year, which is the whole <laughs> yeah. two, two to three things resolution. a day. Yeah, yeah Consistency. And, so uh, like really making making some kind of effort on a daily basis and not knocking yourself down if you don't do it but but really like okay what what did I do today to further our goals and and be able to say two or three things on a daily basis that that's something that I really I really want to happen because David and I literally jumped into this we just jumped in it was like hey let's do this okay boom we have an llc boom we have a podcast boom okay what do we do now <laughs> and, yeah. and we, we yeah, i mean we, we've got i think jumping in so fast rattled us and then and, 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 well uh, it, it did but it also happened right before we both became extremely busy i yes, mean you went back true. to school and even though that's not as busy for you right now i i i mean as a teacher and i have this year and at least three or four more i'm going to be busy with school because i'm not going to throw that away because i'm starting something new i just have to learn how to do both 
balance. Yes, balance. Balance. Absolutely. Find the balance. Uh, yes. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Eh, That's strive. a meme from from Avengers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I just realized what she probably doesn't know what that means. Huh, probably doesn't know what that means. <laughs> Get it? Okay, boomer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, but you're right about all of those things. Um, and that's that's going to be my New Year's resolution. So what's your New Year's resolution specifically? Mine is be more consistent with the work that I do. Well, with the work for Stay Creative, specifically. Right, specifically. Right. But yes. All, I, not, I mean, with everything in my life, but, but more, especially Stay Creative. But mm-hmm. even at work work um, and, 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 the, and everything in my life, I guess. More consistency. Not um, yeah. being a really, really great friend for a month and then getting tired and depressed and not answering text messages for a week or whatever, you know. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you're looking for balance and consistency across every aspect of your life. Yes. So for me, I, I really try hard not to think of myself as only improving for New Year's. Uh-huh. But because we are talking about what I want to think about from now until this time next year where you're looking at what you, you know, uh-huh. that I really do want to work into my daily life some type of this is what I'm doing every day for, for this business because it is really important to me. But it's also not something I focus on as much as I can. And one of the reasons is because the other things I do in my life takes so much of my energy I mean writing a play and staging a play and dealing with school and teaching you know seven classes a day and these are things that I've done all my life but they are time consuming and all of my life I have thrown my full self into teaching and I, I don't plan on ever not doing that so from now until I retire I probably will still be writing two plays a year or you know I will definitely be staging them even if I'm not writing them and that just takes time it, and, and energy, and it wipes me out some days. Mm-hmm. So I've just got to figure out how to how to also fit this in. Because I do, I'm, one of the main reasons I'm doing this business and this podcast and everything else that goes along with all this is because I do know that retirement is coming. And I just cannot see myself retiring from teaching and then just doing nothing. So to have something to go to... I, I really feel the strong need to start it now, even though I'm so busy. I just have to find the time and the, yeah, the drive. By the time you retire, this will we'll be definitely, huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, I also think that, just as your friend, I think that you should make a resolution to not let others stress you out. As In what much. way? In what way? Mm-hmm. In every aspect um uh as in do what it have the confidence in yourself that to do what you do knowing you do it well Mm -hmm. and that the rest will fall into place and if it doesn't it isn't your fault no i don't ever think it's my fault but it's just there's so much to think about when you're doing a production it's just it's overwhelming i know but i'm just mean i just mean i just don't i don't like it when i see people other people stressing you out is what is all i'm saying (laughs) so that is my resolution for you for me for you okay i also have another resolution okay i'd like a lot less drama in my life this year okay uh you know what i mean like i just a lot less like Crazy ups and downs. Uh, this is a, lot, a lot less high school BS crap. You yeah. know, like there's no need for any of any crazy ups and downs and and dealing with people who hurt you or do annoying mm-hmm. dramatic things or dealing with dramatic people or or anything like that. Uh, I think I've learned to avoid that and to cut that out and mm-hmm. to to be better with that. But that's my resolution. Is this year mm-hmm. I'd like nothing dramatic that I that's that's in my control. I mean something with dramatic might happen that's out of my control no, no, completely. Sure. But um I'd like to make it through this year without having a single like oh man, that was such a crazy that's horrible. horrible. I don't want a story to talk about. I don't right. want any stories from twenty twenty that are bad. So from what I've observed, you have definitely become more um you've more of an advocate for yourself like i'm I'm not going to deal with this you know this uh is this is how things are so this is how i'm gonna you either deal with me this way or not 
and that's going to help in that department. But for both of us, obviously what we're saying is that we have to work on our reactions to things because for me, if you're seeing stress, it's my reaction to things. Mm -hmm. So, um, I react because I see when I'm working with my students and they're not doing their part. I just, I want so, so much for the production to be good that I feel like a whole lot of what makes the productions good is my drive. It's like my vision. I'm going to see this thing on stage. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be just terrific. And I know that the students that I cast will be terrific, but when we're working through the rehearsal process and it's been really difficult because they're not doing their part, that, that is stressful for me just because I want them to have the best experience they can have. And the other part of the stress is just there's so much to do. There, there just is a whole lot, like getting all the different parts in place and, you know, working after school for hours, for weeks. It, it's, you know, school is enough, but then when you also add on two or three hours of rehearsal on a daily basis for three weeks, it's, it's a lot of extra, you know. And so it is stressful. Uh, I think I handled the stress last time a lot better than I have in the past, but it, it weighs me down. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. And I feel, I, I, I see you in times like that act differently in ways that you may not usually act in and it, I just don't like seeing it so you react better yes sir. Um, I'm not saying anything's your fault or that you've done anything wrong that's not what I'm trying to imply at all I, I just want to see things affect you less in a negative way uh, and, and, and the only way to do that is you can't control what other people do so like you just said you have to Change control my reaction to your it. reaction to it you're right and um and is that um, is that I I don't mean to be offensive or no, saying no I, I hear what you're saying um I, I mean obviously stress is not good so I just don't want you to be as stressed out about things <laughs> you're welcome well, thank you yeah <laughs> so we have reached our hour point. we have reached our hour and it's almost time for the LSU yeah! football game ah, so what is bad. this what is this a, the Peach Bowl the Peach and Bowl the the playoff game whoever wins this game and then whoever wins the other playoff go to the national championship game. So this is a playoff game. It is a playoff. But also it's a Peach Bowl. That's what they call it. But I thought you don't even have to try to understand all that. You just go with it and say LSU is going to win, and then they're going to win the next game, and then we're going to be national championship. Don't even don't try to understand it. Just just go with it. Is there like a playoff bracket? Like is there like a? There are definitely there's two teams playing, two different groups, two different. Let me start over. There's LSU playing um, Oklahoma, and Ohio's playing Crimson. Clemson. So whoever wins those two games will go to the final game. For and the is the Ohio team. Clemson a bowl game? Probably. I don't know how any of that okay. works, David. I just know. That how come they didn't get to go to the Peach Bowl? I don't know who determines all that. I really don't. I, I I'm new back into this after not caring for a long time. But I don't care. What I know for a fact is LSU's going to win today, and they're going to win whoever they're going to win against whoever they have to play for the national. You know that for a fact. I am positive we are going to be national champions. I I I. I, I I believe in you. Mm-hmm. I believe in your power to make that happen. So if LSU went, when LSU wins the national championship, right. it is because of Donna and everybody else in the Tiger Nation. And, we all know. Yeah, it. but especially you. Uh, <laughs> in episode twenty four of Creative Conversations. All right. It'll be really awkward if they lose. Don't say at this things point. like that. Don't say things with like this that. podcast. No, 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 no. Don't say things like that. We don't say things like that. LSU is going to be a national championship team. Yeah. Yes, yes, they are. All right. That just led into another conversation I want to have, but we're at right our hour, so we need to. We, we need will to stop, and we will pick the conversation yeah. up next time, maybe in our positive, perhaps conversations. So yes. that's another one. If you haven't seen, we are starting a shorter version of our podcast called Positive Conversations with David and Donna, where we help you find ways to stay positive in your everyday life. That's right. So for this one, I guess we're done. I'll say thank you so much for listening. This has been Creative Conversations with David and Donna, and I'm Donna. I'm David. Stay creative. Thank you.